Up next, a look at Jaws the board game, a one verse mini game from Ravensburger. Ravensburger was awesome enough to send us a review copy of Jaws, but no other compensation was provided. All right, Jaws was designed by Prospero Hall, uh, published by Ravensburger in 2019. Plays two to four players. Full game takes a bit over an hour, uh, but is very dependent on how much discussion happens on the main character player side of things. Yeah. So to get a good look at the excellent components you get in a shiny new copy of Jaws, be sure to check out our unboxing video. Now, the components are really nice, as Sean said. They, they are excellent components. There are some great meeple, including a fantastic sharp meeple. Uh, there's little boats that actually fit the meeple in them. Uh, there's a number of cards. There's a nice compact two-sided board that I think would be great for like a coffee shop or a diner. Um, some other tokens and bits. Like, I, I honestly have no component complaints at all about the components in this game yeah definitely solid materials ravensburger has really been on point when it comes to components in current releases uh though i do have to say what is with ravensburger calling meeples movers that just confuses me I, the same thing like horrified the, the minis they're called movers take your mover and move it here that was just weird it's yeah. gotta be a translation thing or maybe maybe someone's tried to trademark meeple i don't think so mm. But, uh, well, how does one play this board game version of Jaws? All right. Well, in Jaws, one player takes on the role of the shark. The other players play Hooper, Brody, and Quint. Game of Jaws is broken into two acts with the results of the first act impacting the second. In the first act, characters are moving around the island trying to capture the shark, whereas act two, the shark is attempting to destroy the character's boat or eat them all. So much in keeping with the rough outline of the movie, Shark as hunter, and then shark as hunted. Now, the first part of the game is Act 1. Uh, it's Amity Island, which I have to assume is the island the movie takes place on. Uh, here, players playing the shark it attempts to eat as many swimmers as possible, while the characters try to attach two barrels to the shark and protect the swimmers. Each round starts off with an event, which mainly has players placing a number of swimmers at the beaches that are on the island and can include some additional rules that will impact the rest of the round. Then the shark acts followed by the characters. The shark gets three actions, which are either really simply eat a swimmer or move. In addition, though, the shark starts the game with four special abilities. They can use one of these each round. Now, these let the shark do things like eat extra swimmers, move extra spaces, or evade detection for the round. Now, all of these actions are taken in secret by the shark players. So this is one of those hidden movement games like Scotland Yard or uh, many other games. Uh, Spectre Ops is the other one I was trying to think of. And they do this using this shark tracker pad. And the only thing they have to tell the other players is how many swimmers they've eaten and where, not at what time, and if they trip any motion sensors, which are on the barrels, which we'll get to in a second. Now, and the shark pad is a real piece of paper, not a dry erase board, with more than enough sheets for any but the biggest fans of this yeah. game who plan to hand it down to their kids later in life. You may you may run a little short at that <laughs> point, but... I am sure there's probably somewhere online you can get more yeah, sheets. Absolutely. Too. All right, next, the Players Act. So each character has their own set of actions. Some overlap, some don't. Uh, Quince, the pilot of the fishing boat, the Orca, uh, he's in the water around Amnity and can either move, rescue swimmers, pick up barrels, or launch barrels in the water. Launching barrels is, of course, important because if a launched barrel hits the shark, the shark meeple is placed on the board so everyone knows where it is, and the shark player takes the barrel and places it on their player board. Once the shark has two barrels, this act is over. Barrels that don't hit the shark, though, float in the water and act as motion detectors going forward. Now, Brody helps from the shore. Brody can move, rescue swimmers, pick up and drop off barrels, use the binoculars to try to spot the shark on a beach, or close one of the beaches. Closing beaches actually prevent swimmers from showing up there for a limited number of time. Hooper, the last character, pilots his speedboat around the island. Hooper can move, rescue swimmers, pick up barrels, give barrels to Quint, and use a fish finder. Now, the fish finder is used. The shark player has to tell the other players if they're in the square with the fish finder or in adjacent square to the fish finder or somewhere else. Right. So player positioning and cooperating cooperation is really important during these phases, though we should be I should be aware it can lead to quarterbacking if you've got one yes. of those players at the table. 
Yeah, this is definitely like you have the co-op aspect from the three players. The three characters are working together. And interesting enough, you play the game three player. They literally say each player chooses a character and then shares the third, which I don't think I've ever seen in a game like worded that way, like spelled yeah. out. So play continues. Uh, event, shark moving, players moving until either the shark has eaten nine swimmers or the characters have managed to attach two barrels to the shark. So honestly, I think this act one is where the game really shines. Uh, as you will not be able to do everything you want as a player or as a team. And you really need to outthink the shark who needs to stay on their toes the whole time. Uh, and it, it really is a well-shaped, uh, you know, one versus many yep. game. So act two, the Orca. So at the start, uh, the shark's going to get a number of shark ability cards, so special abilities. And the characters are going to get a bunch of random equipment cards. And this is based on how well everyone did in the first half. Um, the board gets flipped over and you build a boat out of tiles. You're going to put your meeples on the boat, movers, or your movers on the boat. And then what's going to happen here is you are going to flip over three cards from this deck called the resurface deck. And it shows three potential spots the shark could pop up and attack from. Now the shark's going to take tokens, A, B, and C, and it's going to pick which of the three cards basically they're going to follow. And then the characters then get to move around on the boat pick one of their weapons from their crew cards and then puts a target token going, I'm going to think the shark's going to show up here and I'm going to attack here. Uh, then there's additional crew cards they can spend too. Like there's chum, which lets the characters flip over another token. And there's like a shark cage that protects them. And there's a whole bunch of cards that modify this basic gameplay, but the basic gameplay is shark decides where they're going to pop up. Characters try to guess where that is and hit the shark. Right. Again, you do run into that potential for quarterbacking because it is a, a co-op team game, especially if one player has played the game multiple times. Yeah. They, there are some some sort of themes you can pick up that, that will help newer players. And so do watch for that. So now that the characters know where they're attacking, the shark knows we're going to do it. They flip their thing up. You put the shark on the board and then you resolve. So any crew that are targeting that spot get to make their attacks. Uh, this is used using specific uh, custom dice. They're really nice, like blood red dice with uh, little hit symbols on them. And assuming the shark isn't killed, it then gets to make an attack itself. Now the shark can either attack the bow or swimmers in the water. And honestly, the shark meeple is awesome. <laughs> Do I got to say big G was playing the other day and pointed something out. I totally missed. It has jaws on both sides which is kind of creepy. <laughs> it should have eyes on one of those sides or something. She was rather creeped out by that. So play continues like this. Uh, the shark pops up at different locations, the crew trying to guess where it is until either all the crew are dead, shark wins. The boat has completely sunk, shark wins. Or the shark is dead, players win. In addition, there are rules for uh, playing just each part of the game separately, which is actually kind of solid because they are good enough. Like, like, to be honest, if this was 20 years ago, these would have been two separate games and people would have accepted it perfectly fine. You could have had Jaws shark attack and you could have had Jaws save the beach and sold them separately. And people probably would have been perfectly happy with it. Now, before I go into my final thoughts, I do need to state that I have never seen Jaws, which means I had no preconceived notions of what to expect from this game, except that there's a shark in it. And there's a quote about needing a bigger boat. That is pretty much the extent of my Jaws knowledge. And I had no clue what the two acts had to do with the movies. I, I had no strong feelings towards any of the characters. I don't know those three characters. I don't feel like that I care about one more than another. And one of the things that impressed me about this board game version of Jaws is that this didn't do anything to ruin the game for me. I didn't feel I was missing out on anything. Now, I will admit, I bet you if I knew and loved Jaws, I would have enjoyed the game more than I had, but it didn't do anything to ruin it by not knowing anything. Now, I have seen the movie multiple times, so I sat down to play this with preconceptions. Uh, now, I think that while unnecessary, there are more than enough connections to the movie to give fans that feeling that they're uh, looking for, that sort of yeah. connection to the game that makes them you you think you're in that, that setting, essentially. Uh, now, while I don't think you're ever going to get that pit of your stomach horror feeling that you can get from the, the movie uh, if you're you know willing to dive into it, uh, I think it's still a solid representation of the movie. Fair. Totally fair. So overall, Jaws is a very solid one versus many board game. Uh, component quality, 
is top notch. I found both acts to be fun. Uh, both, again, as I mentioned, are detailed enough that they could be could have been standalone games. And I think they did a great job of combining those two games. And we have seen both the shark get caught very early and the shark get all nine swimmers and that not unduly affect the second half. Now it did have an impact, but it didn't seem like uh, because the shark did so great at the beginning, they automatically won or anything like that. Uh, what I have find that's interesting. And I'm seeing this in the chat room tonight here on Twitch is that different people seem to like different parts of the game. Like everyone seems to have their preference, right? So um, we have Pennywise preferred the first act, whereas Angie Games preferred the second half. So I, I think that's interesting. And I also find that people will switch which phase they prefer depending on which side they're on. So like people have enjoyed part one more as the shark, I've found most cases. Um, what I do see though, is everyone who plays the shark seems to prefer playing as the shark. Like not enough that, oh, I hate playing the characters, but like, it does seem like... Um, if everyone's played this game before you're going to have that, well, who gets to be the shark this time moment. Right. So I solidly saw, I fall solidly on the first time. Uh, first act is a better yeah. team uh, with the opening act being more of an interesting game for me, but full disclosure, I've only played as the players. I never actually got a, uh, a turn as the shark. So mm -hmm. yeah, fair. It, like you need to play the shark just so you can see it. Uh, honestly, I can't find anything to really fault about this game. Now, I will say, this isn't a game that I personally feel I want to play often. This just isn't one that I'm just like itching to play again. Now, maybe it's the fact that I have no personal ties to the license. Or maybe it's something to do with the gameplay. I don't know. Um, playing Jaws does feel like sitting down to play two different games when you play. Again, that's not a bad thing, but it's just like I could fit in two games of something else or I could play two different games instead of playing both parts of Jaws. And I like to me, that's something I consider when trying to decide what to play on game night. So I, to me, it really is a solid game with some great build quality, some interesting mechanics and play. And while I had a great time playing it, uh, playing it once as a human, and I would try it again to play as the shark. I feel it was mostly a one and done for me other than that, uh, which is something I found disappointing because again, it's a really well-made game. Like mm -hmm. so they have clearly put so much effort into this game and I wish I wanted to play it more, but I just don't. Yeah. Now I got to say, if you are a fan of Jaws the movie and you're a board gamer, you got to try this somehow. Whether it's whether it's you pick up a copy and 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 play it for yourself, or you try it out at the local game store, you borrow a friend's copy, go to the local gaming cafe. Like I honestly, if you are a Jaws fan, you got to try this game. Got to give it a shot. Now, if you're like me and haven't played Jaws, there's still a lot to like in this game, especially if you like that one versus many, the the semi co-op game, right? The one team based co bunch of players working together against the, someone else. If you dig those, I think this is a solid example. Now, if you do get a chance to play, the thing I do strongly recommend is give the game a try from both sides. Try it once as the shark and once as the characters. Now, because the, the gameplay is different enough that I think you want to see it from both sides. Now, the problem is it takes a while to play both parts. And I don't think anyone's going to want to do it right then. Like, if you've got a group of four players, you're not going to give everyone a turn as the shark in one game night. I just can't see playing four games of Jaws in a row. So you almost need like two days, two chances to play the game so you can, can spread it out. I would actually say you almost need four chances because yeah. a lot of the time you're not going to find people who are going to want to play as the people again. If they've yeah. played as the people, they're going to want to play as the shark. So you need another new set of people to yeah. play as the people just to while try everyone's out, yeah. trying the shark. And, and that's that's sort of why I think it falls flat for me. I, you know, hey, I played it as the people. I loved it. Now I want to play as the shark, but I feel bad. I don't want you to have to play as the people again. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, for a more in-depth look at Jaws, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.